All right, well, we're going to go ahead and kick off because it looks like this is who's going to be around for today. And um, I got a question before we get into, into some things here. <clears throat> How many of you guys have a really defined sales process? Meaning you've got a, a pretty set step by step by step process in which you take everybody through on a consistent basis to make sure your sales pipeline, remember sales and real estate is the acquisition side, is button tight and things don't fall through. Anybody feel like they've got that? I can't say that we have it that buttoned up and tight, but we have it defined and working, but it's not too, not totally buttoned. There's always things to work. Okay. Anybody else? Who has no process? You're kind of like a, a 16, 17 year old girl on her first date, just excited. You just get excited when somebody actually wants to do something and you just, your like mind goes everywhere other than let me take them through this process. Anybody feel like that sometimes? I see Kim kind of going like this. It'll be kind of in the dependent. There'll be people that'll that'll be happy and giddy and not know what to do if it's something that's like beyond what they're actually were expecting. Say that again, Bob. It could be situation dependent. It could be your most savvy person, but <clears throat> if something gets handed off to them that they weren't expecting that super exceeds of what they were actually working on, they might be giddy and silly until they get their, you know, get their head back in uh, where they need to be. Okay. Who's kind of in the middle where they feel like, hey, sometimes I do pretty good about just kind of systematically taking something through. And then other times I kind of like lose my wit, rush myself, feel all uncomfortable. Uh, it's not like I'm always that way, but I'm also not always kind of dialed in. Pretty safe to say that's where the majority of, of us fall, right? Liz, I'm going to put you on the spot since you said you've got it almost dialed in, but not fully, right? How does it feel when something kind of moves through the sales process pretty systematically or pretty seamlessly? How does it feel for you? Well, and it's funny that you say that because that was a, a process and a problem for Marie and I, because we didn't have that. And it was all over the place when something would, when we'd send out a campaign or something. And so we did dial it back and then look at it. And one of the biggest changes in that, and, and it was brought on by you looking at our stuff is the calls I was missing. And so even as simple as spreading one campaign out in a drip in, in a 10 minute increments or a half an hour increment, just knowing that that wasn't working out, we send all 150 messages out at the same time. I, I, I don't think we should send out more than 200 based on something with Twilio and something else. But if she sent them out just all the same time and I then I just get bombarded and I wouldn't be ready and I'd miss a bunch of stuff and then you know it would just keep happening. So just alone in, um, in doing the drip, which can happen through Lead Vault, it can set that up and she did that. That was a huge difference because now I know the calls are gonna start at nine and I'm ready, I'm at my desk, I'm ready to go, I have everything up and I can start fielding as many as I can and then go back and call the ones that didn't. So that alone was a huge, a huge help. And then that knowing, you know, we used to do it on Fridays too. And then you were like, why are you doing it on Fridays? It's the craziest thing ever. And so we switched it to Tuesdays or Tuesdays or Wednesdays, whatever day she does. And it was so much better. Like then it wasn't like, oh, on Friday, I'm gone. I'm, I'm doing this or have a meeting here. It was like, that's the day I sit down. I know the calls are going to come and then they're going to go out from there. <clears throat> so even just those couple things made a huge difference. And then again, the other thing you showing us on the conversation part where I was leaving all the conversations as new and I wasn't, I couldn't figure out how to find out what was coming in and what was old and how you, it was a, such a simple thing, but you know, it's like, 
sometimes it's the most obvious that we don't realize, but checking those conversations off and moving them out of, then I knew who was new. Oh, look, this is a new conversation. I need to get to this right away. So it's safe to say that when you started to get a little bit better process or when it moves through the process, it's a little less stressful. Oh yeah. By, by, yeah. A little more enjoyable. Yeah. A hundred percent. And then we still haven't gotten this video made, which is a simple video and I can probably just do it. I mean, we were going to tag team it, but like Sean's talked about before the loom video, where you can do those under five minutes. And we have a process that I do really fast now. I, I mean, now I've perfected it on how to find a comp super fast on Zillow. And so when I look those up, when I'm even talking to the people, I put those links in the notes in Lead Vault so that Marie has them there. First, the link is to the house that we're looking at. And the second link, which is my comp link, is super crazy, ridiculously long. So I take that link super fast and put it in the UL, URL shortener, shorten it up and drop it into the um, notes. And so then she can look what I comped it against. And so then again, just knowing that is if I get that stuff in there right away, then she has what she needs to look it up then and see. And then she has a formula that she does deal or no deal. And she plugs in all these numbers. And at the bottom, it says deal or no deal based on what the price is that we could offer possibly. That was a lot. <laughs> so this is what I want to get into today. That's why I put Liz on the spot. I kind of gave her a heads up on our, our call earlier um, on this. When we don't have a sales process, acquisition process, we can miss a lot of opportunities. We could be very confused. And when we've got multiple people in a business, Chris, you got your dad on the other side. Liz, you got Marie on the other side. John, you're flying solo, but you can still miss a lot by yourself, right? Um, you know, Kim, Jean, you guys are, are each kind of handling different areas, but at some point, both gloves got to touch uh, on these, right? Whether we're, we're in business together or not, you know, with somebody or not, there's a chance that things are going to get missed. And over the years, this is something that I've learned that really has helped is just nailing down what is that funnel? What does the, the sales cycle look like through my normal, like kind of everyday ideal opportunity? Yes, you're going to have nuances. Yes, you're going to have things that don't necessarily fit in there. So I want to kind of break down. I'm going to, I'm going to kind of share the screens and do some different stuff here today. But um, I want to just kind of talk through some of the, the, the processes that you guys already have and then look for opportunities where we can maybe clean it up or enhance it a little bit. So I'm going to ask for a volunteer first. And if not, I'm going to put some people on the spot. But uh, I'm also going to kick somebody off the Zoom in a minute. If she does not jump off the Zoom, I'm going to kick her off because she's supposed to be on vacation. We can't hear you. Can't hear you. Can you hear me? You now can, we can hear you. You can hear me. Okay. It is pouring outside, like completely pouring. So we all came in and took showers and we're just relaxing before we go to dinner. So my kids are playing on their DS. They're actually a Nintendo Switch. That is literally the cloudy wetness of crazy Cancun at the moment. So I figured I had a few minutes. I could say hi. All I just right. took a shower. You can stay on for a few. <laughs> Lucky it's raining because if you were still sitting in front of the palm tree, you were getting kicked off. <laughs> jealous. <laughs> Chris said, don't be jealous. Don't be jealous. Say hi. Dude, okay. I ain't jealous. I got palm trees right outside my window. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So who uh, who would like to volunteer to be kind of in the hot seat? Nobody. You You do realize growth happens when you what is involved in this hot seat? You're out because you overthought about it. 
Well, that's one way to eliminate being on the hot seat. Growth happens when you're in the hot seat. Screw it, I'll play tennis, let's go. <clears throat> All right, Bob. Long time listener, first time caller. <laughs> Bob, tell me, <clears throat> when uh, after Mark, I'm gonna set it up first. Picture this, marketing has already been out. I don't care what the marketing is. You got texts out, you got postcards out, you got whatever out, you got social posts. I don't care what the marketing is. The marketing message is out. Somebody sees that message, they get in touch with you. <clears throat> whether that's a phone call, whether that's coming through your website, whatever the case might be. <clears throat> you make contact with that person. What is the first step presently that you like to do with them? They called me or I called them. They got in touch with you. This is complete inbound, You no cold call, no nothing. It's you sent maybe a text and they replied. They saw something on social media and answered you. They jumped on your website and came through. They got a mailing from you and, and called you, whatever the case might be. What is the first step in your process? Put it in a CRM of some sort to document exactly who they are if that didn't come through that already. And then I would probably ask them why they're interested in contacting me and what, what their situation is. How can I help them? Okay, so that first contact with that person, you're trying to get them on a phone, it sounds like, right? Okay. No, I'm asking you. It sounds like you're trying to have a conversation either through text message or on a phone. Quick little conversation. It's kind of what it sounds like, right? Okay, they, you said they called me, so let's assume they're already on the phone with me and I'm talking to them. How's that? Okay, so I called you. What's the objective here? What's your first step? What are you trying to do? Um, first thing I want to do is build rapport and figure out why they're selling their house or why they need to sell their house or why they contacted me to begin with. Okay. Kind of know what you want to do on that call. How long is that call? That first call should maybe be about five, 10 minutes, or depending how much they want to disclose, it could go on for as long as I got questions to ask them. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to stop right there. Who can tell by his answer? where I might go with this. I don't know if, you, if you're gonna say he should be leading that first conversation. So he should know if he wants it to be five or 10 minutes or if he wants it to go a certain length of time. Kind of where I was going. Bob, your answer was, it should be around five, 10 minutes unless they wanna go longer. This is what I mean by clearly defining your process. That first call, if you want it to only be five, 10 minutes, whether they want to go longer or not, you can decide if it goes longer. But your process is, hey, the first call, I want it to be five, 10 minutes, and here's my objective of that call. I want to gather these points. I want to gather why did they call me? What is their biggest problem? What is it that they need help with? And take it from there. Does that make sense? John, I saw you on mute. Yeah, I was going to say find motivation and urgency. Yep. Reason I say set it. If you want it to be five, 10 minutes, if you want it to be 20 minutes, if you want it to be a half hour, set that. I don't care what it is that you want it to be, set it. Reason why is it puts a process to this and it gives you the ability to I love the idea of five, 10 minutes. It gives you the, the ability to set it up with the person that, hey, I only need five, 10 minutes of your time right now. Thanks for calling. We can knock this out in about five, 10 minutes. I just need to gather a couple of things from you. You got five minutes to talk? Absolutely, I do. Cool. Point one, point two, point three. Here's what I need to get to, right? And then you know that if that person can't spend any longer, you've got at least what you need to move to your next phase. But when we don't have it clearly defined like that, do you see how all of a sudden a phone call comes in and the next thing you know, this call you're on for 30 minutes, this call you're on for an hour, this one over here, you've been on for five minutes and you're like, damn it, I didn't get enough out of that phone call or I got way too much on this one or this one, we were so far off topic by the end of the call that I feel like I'm, I'm lost on what's really going on because the process wasn't clearly defined. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. My first call with somebody 
30 minutes max. Somebody books with me to talk about our services. I literally, right before this call, got off one. 30 minutes. If it's non-REI, non-real estate individuals calling about REI Toolbox or booking with us for REI Toolbox, there isn't even a solution that comes out of my mouth on the first call. If it's REI Toolbox, then I will get into talking about packages by the end of the first call. Clear process, right? So Bob, let's say you nail that down. You've got them on for five, 10 minutes. You gathered a couple points. From that call, what is the next step in your process? Depend on the context of the call, but I would have to follow through with looking at the exact property. If there was anybody else that needed to be in the conversation as well, if they're, let's say they're selling the property, see if there's any other entities that I have to worry about, if it's a foreclosure or anything like that. So doing the analysis of the, of the property, let's just say. A pretty common second step, right? Is it possible on a consistent basis? Remember this, this process we want to build is 100% based on our everyday ideal. Every day, ideal client, is it possible in real estate to have a solution in the first five, 10 minute phone call with them? Even in the first 30 minute phone call with them? No, because there's a lot of what that you guys have to do to get ready for that. Research and due diligence. Discovery. Discovery. Discovery, de desktop analysis. These are all words for the exact same thing, right? Due diligence, desktop analysis, discovery process, research. We got to get to try to put some things together here to figure out the next move. So very common second step in the acquisition slash sales cycle in real estate is going to be some sort of a due diligence period. Now, Bob, how long is that period for you? It shouldn't be more than 24 to 48 hours. And by catching the language being used here? Shouldn't be. When we, when we say shouldn't be, we're allowing ourselves to deviate from that. Hey, that process, that's a 24 hour segment. When something gets in that, that cycle, it needs to be out in 24 hours or less. So that means by the time I move somebody into that, that phase, I got 24 hours to do my job to then move to the next step. Bob, what would be your next step or what is your next step? Uh, either talk with the t my team or contact the person back and let them know what some of the uh, solutions might be. Okay. Sounds like two different steps right there. Would you guys agree? Next step would be talk to my team. Step after that would be contact them back. Contact the team. How long should that take, Bob? How long should that person be in that, or that, that opportunity be in that phase? That should probably, I would keep it to probably within an hour talking with the team after doing the analysis. Okay, so you got 24 hours to do some analysis. I'm going to move them to that phase if I need to talk to the team. This is why I said it, you could split this. Because if I don't need to talk to the team, guess what? I bypass that, that phase and I move to the next phase and that's contact them back. But if I need to talk to my team, I got 24 hours to do my due diligence. I'm going to move them into that, that phase and I should be able to have them in and out of that phase within about an hour or the next day, right? Kind of thing. Because if you do your due diligence, let's say at eight o'clock at night and you move them over to the, the other side, you'll talk to your team first thing in the morning, boom, they're out. So now it gets back into the contact them back. In this phase, Bob, what is the objective? What are you trying to do in that phase? Offer opportunities of solutions uh, or straight up, you know, what, what the intent is of a purchase based off of their urgency, as well as the information provided from the analysis back to them to let them know, hey, this is kind of where we stand. If this isn't good for you, you know, thank you very much. And then, you know, we'll move on. So you're moving in this phase, you're moving straight to presenting options. Yes. Okay. For some, this might work. 
depending on what type of properties, what, what you're going after, how, what your exit strategies typically are, that kind of stuff. Some of you might need a, a different phase in there. Maybe contact them back to set up a time to see the property. Mm. Right, because I've done my due diligence. Maybe I've talked to the team. I've identified there's something here. It's worth more energy going into this. Now I want to go see the property. Some of you may not, uh, like I know Liz, Marie, you guys have been not visiting as many properties and moving towards just kind of getting an option in front of them and kind of going through because you're putting a lot of that into your due diligence up front, more video, photo, that kind of stuff uh, from them. There's no right or wrong. It's what this, it's your process, right? So in Bob's case, it sounds like it's more contact them back and pursue next steps. Probably setting up either time to go see the property or setting up time to go over options is how I would better label that one. I don't want to randomly reach out to them and expect that they're in a mental capacity to be able to take in options that I'm about to present to them. I'd want to set that up. Hey, Chris, spent a little bit of time, did some stuff, talked to my team. We've got some options for you. Now might not be the best time. What would be a good time in the next day or two for us to get together and go over our options? That makes sense there? So now, Bob. Once it finally moves from that stage to the next, I'm assuming the next stage would be where you're actually giving them the options. How do you normally do that? Phone, in person, what do you do? Preferably would be to do it in person. Uh, there's sometimes that it's not you know, feasible based on whatever the situation is. They're at work, I'm at work or something like that. But the preferred option would be with them face-to-face -face at the, the property location. Okay, so face to face. Mm -hmm. So in that previous phase, it would be more, hey, I want to get back in touch with them, let them know that I've got a couple options for them, and set up a time to meet with them face to face, preferably at their location. Now, once you get them to the to that phase, let's say Chris S is your seller, you reached out to him, boom, he's like, sure, Bob, come on over tomorrow. Got him in that phase. You've got him there. You're going to present in person. What's next? Bonk him on the head and take his keys. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, You're going to need a big bat to bonk, Chris. <laughs> uh, let's see. <clears throat> Say it one more time, please. You're sitting in front of Chris. You're presenting offers. What is your next step? What's the objective of meeting him in person? What are we trying to move him to? What's the next step in this process? Well, just to basically uh, watch his reactions and see where he stands, what his thoughts are for each one of the options, what's what's the best for him, and when would when would he be ready to move to the next step? Yeah, so what is that next step? Next step would either be him signing a contract, which should be on the bottom of the stack of options, or I don't want to say wait till the next day because somebody else could come in there and scoop it. Just have to figure out what his thoughts are. Okay. Is this where our sales cycle could split yep. into two, two channels, right? If I were to, let me see if this will work. If I were to draw this out, let me see if this pulls up. Whoop. I already did all that. Come on. Are you guys seeing the screen at all? Just says that you're sharing, but this, it's blank. Yeah, I don't know why it's. There it goes. Now do you see the whiteboard? So this is where, right, he's up here at this. All right, they're meeting in person, and this is where the sales cycle could split into two distinct tracks. One track could be what, Bob? 
uh, no, these, these aren't good enough for me, or we got to figure out different scenarios. Okay. So I would call that now we're going into a, a follow-up track. All right. This would be no, those options didn't work. No, they're not quite ready. No, they're not going to sign today. No, they need to think about it. No, they have more questions. All right, anything that leads me to, in your case, hey, I'm in person with you. My goal is to get you to sign today. Anything outside of you signing today goes into this track. It means I'm starting to come down this side of my sales funnel, right? Okay. Yes. Means they what? They signed the contract. They signed. So let's continue running down the, the yes side for now. So they say yes, they sign. What's the next step in your process from there? From there it would be to get with the team and then have, uh, if it's a rehab, come in and have a contractor do the analysis again. That way we can go back and figure out where the deficiencies are that we might need to do repairs and do an adjustment to the contract. So it could split again right here mm -hmm. in his case, right? Because if it's a rehab, we're going back into more of a, a due diligence with our contractor, right? Mm -hmm. What if it's a wholesale, Bob? What's your next step if this was a, hey, I'm just going to wholesale this property? Uh, just contact the buyer's list, push it out to every everybody I know to see who'd be interested and put my markup on it. So we get into marketing the opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. So let's stay on the marketing side for a second. When, when they sign, we identify it's a wholesale and we're going into marketing. What is the next step here? What are we actually doing in our marketing? What are we gonna actually do to market this opportunity? Just pushing it out in every angle that you could imagine. So describe pushing it out in every angle that you can imagine. Uh, social media, through your networks. Um, okay, hold on. So social, what else? Personal networks, buyers lists. So email. Mm -hmm. What else? Phone calls. I'm running out of space. I mean, any 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 form of communication that you could get out there to push the product that you have. I, I don't want I don't want the book answer. I want what are you going to do? Oh, well, I haven't been at that point yet, so I don't. I'll be freaking on. I would be called. Okay, all right, so. I would reach out to everybody. So this is where Bob turned into the 17 year old girl and ran around exactly. you know, excited as anything. Cause she got asked to the prom. Okay. So I would put it, if you want to, if you want to get technical about it, all right, I would put it on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. I would email all the people that I know, make some phone calls to the personal people. I know a couple additional investors, reach out and talk to them, send them personal texts and see if they were interested and let them know that it's going to be a double close. John. What's he missing in this cycle? A website. Mm. What do you mean? Uh, you can put properties on your website and then you can drive traffic back to it. So instead of just sending an email with a bunch of crap in it, instead of putting a social post out there with a bunch of random links and random crap all over the place. Gotcha. What, what could be right here in this process? The first thing that should happen when we go into marketing of this opportunity. The pictures that you took and a rough idea of what the assignment's going to be and all that good stuff. Property page on the site. So that our social posts can link to this, so that our emails can link to this, so that when we call people, we can tell them, go here and look at this to get all the details. Got it. 
I know you haven't been here, Bob, but you see why it's important to plan it. No, nope, I'm with you. This is this. I've actually got more out of this last 10, 15 minutes than I had from previous experience. And I'll leave it at that. How's that? <laughs> so could we take this deeper on the marketing side? Yes, but that's your field of expertise, not mine. So somebody help them out. John, you're, you're, you're next on my screen right now. Let me do this where I could actually see everybody. <laughs> but John, I'm going to pick on you because you and I just had this conversation. And let's see where your, your thoughts are going. Getting a social post out, getting some emails out, getting a phone call going out, having this property page, driving people to it the first time is great. But does this part of our branch branch yet again? Yeah, because we could possibly um, have people giving us feedback on why they're not going to take it or will you take different offers? Um, how quick can you can we get in to see it? You've got to set up all the appointments if we're going to let them see it. So there's all those different avenues that could fall apart. And then you've got to follow up with everybody again. So it's just a constant follow up. Yeah, this this cycle right here has to go on repeat at, at some form of interval, whatever it is, every three to four days. Or we're constantly reaching out. But are there going to be opportunities that are generated in there where somebody's interested in this? Yeah. And it, it, if I had room to continue drawing, I'll, I'll bring it up. This actually should branch into its own process because there's buyers that are coming in now that are opportunities to purchase that. And that funnel or that sales cycle, right? That acquisition of the buyer of the property that I'm marketing in this wholesale side has its own piece because guess what? When somebody raises their hand and says they're interested, what's the next step that I wanna do from there? Go to the web page, fill out that particular tab with Great. Their so the first step is send them here and tell them to fill out the form. Well, they filled out the form. What's the next thing that I do there? You see how this continues? And when we don't have it this detail, right? And we, we didn't even go down this track over here. We didn't even go down this track over here yet. It isn't a wonder things fall through the crack when we don't have our sales cycle kind of defined out on what am I going to do? Because we, we haven't been here yet. Right, Bob? That's what you said. I haven't been here yet, so I don't really know. Right. But then all of a sudden you get there. And you don't have it figured out ahead of time or planned a thought, kind of what I would like to do when I get there. And we all of a sudden we lose our, our mind. We get stressed, we get nervous, we, we forget things. We overlook it. We're John who sends out a bunch of information and Google links and all these things and then tells calls me and it's like, dude, you could have put all of that right here on a page, sent them one link and it would have been a whole lot better for you and for your site. And Bob, you don't know what you don't know. <laughs> Just do the best you can and then get Sean to clean it up. No, no, I'm not a cleaner. <laughs> got it. Who's, who's got their eyes open a little bit here? You know, I have to say, since Marie is, Marie is on this call, she's so good at this. She's so good at thinking this way and writing it down. We have not perfected it by any means. Because, Sean, just what you're saying right here, like, this could branch off and that can... You know, it's all those this, then that stuff, but um, it's it does help. And writing it down this way is huge. And you can do stickies, you can do a whiteboard or something, but thinking that through with somebody, she's really good at that. <laughs> and to piggyback off of that, Sean, I wonder, do you, have you ever done one of these like in a workflow? Like in Lead Vault, you mean? I don't, I don't know about Lead Vault. Like, for training purposes, put this into a workflow and the if thens and the what ifs and the break offs and all that. Where I was, I was going to go. I have, I do I have one fully built out? No. 
could it be spun up and built in Lead Vault or any kind of a automated system like Lead Vault that has workflow builder capability? 100%. Right. I don't care what platform you're on. If you have the ability in Lead Vault, it's under opportunities, right? Or pipelines. The first step for me would be to sit down and go, and this is a demo account, so I could kind of uh, build some stuff, but I'm going to go here and I'm like, all right, new seller opportunity pipeline. That's the top end. That's the first couple of questions that I asked Bob. What's the first thing? New seller lead comes in. Uh, okay, this is my five to 10 minute call. They're in that phase. Well, next is I want to do. Um, desktop analysis, right? And I want this to be 24 hours. Well, then what was my next step on there? Bob, you said your next step was uh, talk to team, right? right? And I want this in, and I like writing these weird things on my, my stuff like this, because you said, hey, I want to be in and out of this in 24 hours. I want to be in and out of this phase in an hour. Well, the next phase after that was, uh, we, we named it setup time to present, right? Then I wanna present offer. And I wanna get... Uh, then it went to the yes and no contract. Right? Contract signed. Uh, and then after contract signed, I wanna now, uh, you know, is this rehab? Or is this and type and look at the side screen? Dang. Or is this wholesale, right? <clears throat> well, at some point I gotta ask, do I want to keep this pipeline running all the way through or do I want to have multiple pipelines? So maybe at this point I'm like, all right, this is enough for this particular pipeline that as they come through. And all of a sudden I get this uh, person to, you know, I present offer, they sign, and now I can drop it to, is it a rehab or is it a wholesale? Well, if it's a rehab, new set of things are happening versus if it's wholesale, complete other side of my, my process here, right? So I come up here and I say, okay, now let me create my rehab opportunities. Well, what's the first process in my rehab side? Contractor, yeah. All right, contractor review is what you said. We didn't go any deeper on that one. But let me also now create my wholesale. Wholesale opportunity. Well, what was the first thing? Marketing. All right, I'm gonna drop it into ready for marketing. And then what what it needs a uh, property page. So I know that these are the ones are getting property pages made for. And then I'm going to send uh, social posts when it's in this phase. And then I'm going to do uh, email blast. Uh, you know, to my buyers list. And then this one here, I'm going to call buyers that I know. Uh, and then this one is. Follow up. follow up because they're they're in that and I need to go back and, and re kind of follow up. We'll actually name this one reminder, right? These are properties that I've done all this through, but now they're sitting in it and I need to just keep reminding my buyers list about it, right? So there's that, that board. Well, guess what? Wholesale opportunities is going to generate wholesale buyers. And I got a whole process for that. So I go here and I say, okay, let me create my Excuse me. This is my, my wholesale buyer, they're ready to buy. Well, they're, they're interested, right? Is the first stage. So then Bob, what would happen if, if you sent this list out, you sent me a property, I reached out to you and said, hey Bob, I'm interested in buying that, that wholesale opportunity off of you. What's the next, what are you gonna do next with me? 
probably fold you the information that I have about the house or send actually no send them to the web page to go look at the, the the property page I already was there you marketed to me and I already got to that page I got the basic information I told you Bob I'm interested what's next oh shit um Chris help him out Chris S phone call I'm going to set up a meeting with that. They, they told me they're interested, but now I'm going to set up a meeting to talk. What after that? Will you and I talk? I'm still interested. What's next? How fast do you want to move on it? What's the next phase? I told you I'm interested. What are you having me do next? Oh, contract you. We'll send the contract. Then what's next? Now you got, you got me under contract to buy this contract from you. What's next? Uh, set yeah, up legal out to be next like in this process. Get in contact with a title company or real estate lawyer, whatever. And I'm just writing quick words. You guys can name these however you want them, right? But all right, so we've gotten everything over to title. What's next? Schedule closing. Title's going to set that right. Right. Maybe we say, all right, uh, this one's now ready to, it's now in the ready to close phase. What's missing in this? Remember, he said this was a double close. So, oh, so you have to set up two separate times, but you want to make sure that you're. Chris, Chris S, you started to unmute. Uh, let the seller know. Let the homeowner know. If I'm no, double closing, what do I need? Gene, help them out. We're going to go double close this. What do we need? Can't hear you. Tran transactional funds. Yeah. Yeah. Money to close. Somewhere in here, I got to set up lender, right? You also have emergency. But that's probably going to be somewhere in here, right? I got them under contract. I sent them a contract, got them under contract. I need to get some lenders set up. Now it's ready to close because I got my lender in place on the front end if I'm doing a double close on this thing, right? Now it's ready to close. Now could we actually go to closing and close this thing? If the title's clear, should be. Yeah. I mean, it's ready to close. Everything's ready to go. So my next logical stage is closed, right? Okay. How many of you feel like it ends right here? You got to deposit the check after. So after close, what's the next step? You're like, Sean, this property closed. What do you mean there's a next step? Well, there's a double close. So then... Right. I mean... Yeah, I a lot of times that double close is going to happen like bam, bam. I would... Hey, it's in the closing column yeah. that means we're in the in the closing process that might happen today tomorrow whatever the case testimonial what's that bob testimonial could be a testimonial what else could it be in there get in. i was gonna say you better get insurance <laughs> no he wholesaled this thing oh okay But is this now an opportunity to put some marketing out there on, hey, this just got done? What if what if the process was after we done closed this thing, double did the double close, everything's all said and done, we go back to our in our post closing marketing, we go back to our buyers list and shoot it out and be like, awesome opportunity moved. Here's the details of it, blah 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 blah, as proof of concept that people bought your shit. Okay. And that person that slept on it and missed your first couple emails and missed out on a great opportunity. But if we didn't have that in our process, how many of you guys stop right here? It got closed and you're like, well, oh, attention's on to the next one. Yeah, I see Kim. Yeah, money, money, money. <laughs> She's like, I'm off to the spa. I'm doing some other things, scheduling the next vacation. But we missed a big opportunity in our process to put proof of concept out, right? So there, there we just got like what? 
ignore this one. Ignore, let's ignore that one and ignore missed incoming calls. We've got one, two, three, or four different opportunity pipelines in this like quick, fast, down and dirty element. Now, Bob, to your comment, if this, then that type stuff could very easily in here, inside of my new seller opportunity, trigger all sorts of automations. It goes into this desktop analysis phase. I can tell it that once it hits there to send me a reminder in 24 hours that this thing needs to move on. That we should have already done our due diligence and moved it off. I could set automations here that, hey, did you create a task, talk to the team, make sure that that's done. So I'm manually checking that off to make sure I'm staying on point. All of these, I can tell it, hey, when it gets dropped here, rehab, move it to my rehab opportunity board where it's all in there. Now, could you do this without this system? Absolutely. There, there's a ton of other platforms out there. This is just one of the, my favorite features of Lead Vault. Could you do this without a digital CRM? 100%. I used to do this with sticky notes on the wall. We turned a wall in our conference room into a huge board. Matter of fact, uh, there's if you ever want to follow somebody on social media that still operates this way, it's my old business partner, Nathan Bibb with Hometown Fixer, uh, Hometown Fixer Upper in Youngstown, Ohio. He has this magnetic board in his office that he's constantly slapping magnets with property addresses depending on where they're at in the process and he goes he does instagram stories and stuff doing it it's just his way of marketing he's got his digital format too but we used to do that we'd take sticky notes into the conference room and we had columns all over the walls and it was like this one moved to this phase boom this one's in this phase and visually i could see where everything was at today i do it inside of lead bolt where there's automations. Our REI. Scheduled, no show, loss, right? Strategy session conducted, additional meetings needed, hot lead follow up, proposal given, waiting on confirmation. Prep the onboarding form. This one was one signed, send the onboarding. This one immediately, as soon as I drop them there, sends an entire automated welcome sequence. All the emails they ever need to get going. They book a call, it automatically moves them here. This is what's in production. Then the, the dev team takes this and moves it to here when it's under, the, under review with the client. Then they come in here and move it here and this triggers a review request to leave us a Google review. Because the process isn't over when it's all said and done, it's, hey, I, that's a great time for me to get a Google request from somebody. You just had a great experience. We just got you a great website going. You had a good, good experience with us, leave us a review. Who's got some ahas before I keep going here? I got well, one. Some of you guys were gonna leave today with like, oh crap, head spinning, I got a lot of work. Uh, I see Kim writing a, a laundry list of to-dos that's probably going to get handed across the desk to Jean. <laughs> Questions, comments, thoughts, ideas? I, I got one. Go for it, John. I was just thinking when in that process, when we get it signed with our assignment contract then we can actually send it to we're still taking back or we got this assigned we're, but we're still taking back up offers so that would just be another trigger to all your people but they could see how fast that you already got it signed and they could see if it was like 48 hours then they're going to be like whoa this is moving fast i mean it's bad when it's two weeks and it's not happening but anytime you know it's another trigger another touch point right absolutely Who else? Thoughts, comments, questions, ahas, anything? Sean, I can say I'm glad that you um, went over this today because this is on our board to be completed. 
And I mean, it, we have a better sense of how to lay it out now that you went over it. So we just have to work on the on our rehab pipeline. That's what we are working on next. And I would do it just like we did here. I would sit down and just keep asking that question. What's next? And then ask the heart, could it split right here? Could yeah. when it gets here, could it actually be two or three other things that it could lead into? And do I need a deeper process for each one of those? Or is it a simple process where, okay, I can just, it's one step. And if that person doesn't fit that step, they just move on past that, All right? Mm -hmm. Think it through, map it out before you go trying to build anything. Yeah. All right. You can use mind map software for that. There's free ones online. Mind map, whiteboards, freaking sticky notes all over yeah. the wall. <laughs> Anybody else? Thoughts, comments, questions, clarity, anything? Big question. Who's going to sit down and clean up their, their process other than Kim and Gene? Because I already knew this was on Gene's like massive list. He's been building some pretty slick automations. Anybody else going to sit down and rack this out? The more you can clearly define this process, the less likely you're going to have something fall through the crack. Now, does it still fall through the cracks? Sure, but it gets identified really quick. When I look at our stuff and I'm like, why the heck is there something in our in production phase? And this thing's been here for 25 days and our in production timeline is seven days. And then I go to the developers and they're like, oh yeah, we forgot to go in there and move it. But it, it clues me into like, something's wrong here. I, I better jump on this and check with my team. Right, or me as it, it, the front end sales when I'm over here looking at my board and I'm like, oh crap, I got like four things that have been in the strategy session conducted, but I haven't done any follow-up with them. They've been there for a week. Probably should reach out to them and see what's going on because that was a good opportunity, but I needed to follow up more, right? The more you can clearly define it, the better likelihood you're gonna have that it's, you're not gonna miss something or let something slip through the crack or over, over look an opportunity. And if I had to say in real estate, the biggest key starts when you got that contract. Up to that contract, it can be a little loose. Like, doesn't have to be as rigid of a process. But once contract goes in play, kind of like the, the clock's ticking now at that point, right? Especially if we're wholesaling, clock's ticking. I'm under contract. Got to get this contract sold. Got to get some marketing out. Well, what are the things in marketing that I want to get done? What's that process going to look like? How do I leverage the website the right way? So we can do the heavy lifting so I can make it easier to reach out, these type of things. But I need a process there because if I'm going to get a property page built out, well, what does that process look like? When it goes to the property page, what is my process in the property page build out phase? I'm going to put all the property photos into a Google Drive folder and write up a description. I'm going to email support and tell them, here's the information. Please build out the page. Once that page comes back to me, I'm going to take that link. And now I can get ready to move it to the next phase, right? Something like that. How many of you plan to eventually bring other people into your business so you don't have to do it all? Trust me, don't bring them in and then sit down and try to be like, oh yeah, what the hell is my process at that phase? Let me get on a Zoom call and train you. Roger and I bang our heads for what we did early on. I shoot Loom videos constantly for our team when I'm doing stuff. Not because they're responsible for it right now. It's just, I want to be able to have it for when, like when we just brought on Chamara, who does all of our video stuff. I used to do all that. It was easy for me to just send them a bunch of Loom videos and go, here's my process. Podcast ends. Here's what I do. I go to the YouTube video that was done live. Here's what I change. Here's what I do. Here's the tags that I typically add. Here's what I like to think about. Here's the description that I like to put in. Here's the links that go into that description. Then we take it over to the website. Here's what we do on the web page. 
it took Chamorro watching those videos one time and his first day of being on board with us, he was owning that task and I haven't had to step back into it ever again. But it was only that easy because I mapped it out. So same thing on your sales side, map it out. Sound good? This will tie into a little bit we're gonna talk about tomorrow because guess what your marketing sets up? How many feel like your marketing has like a pretty loose call to action? It's never really clear what you want them to do after seeing your marketing piece. Like this one tells them to call, this one tells them to go to the website, this one's like text me back. I'm not really quite sure what I want them to do. That'd be like Domino saying, eh, I mean, come in, send us a postcard, you know, call us, send us a smoke screen. We'll figure out how to get you a pizza. Right, you want to pick it up? Come to the store. You want it delivered? Pick up the phone and call us. Pretty clear cut, right? Oh, you want to use this discount code? And you got a brick and mortar store? It's only good for in-person -per in purchases. Because that, per that piece of marketing is actually meant to get you where? In the store. So that you buy more than what you're actually coming in for, but it's on sale. I forget who I was using the analogy, uh, the bobbleheads at stadiums. Major League Baseball and football, they're, they're great for this. Now, if I said, hey, come to this event, and the first 35 people that walk through the door get a Roger Valdez bobblehead. Do I really want you coming to the event for the bobblehead? No, I want you coming to the event in person because there's probably other things that I want to be able to do in person with you that's going to be better for us and for you than if you were on, on Zoom. We do this all the time. Hey, in per the Baltimore event. <laughs> in person, I took everybody for cocktails and dinner. Well, we bought everybody lunch, actually, not dinner. Lunch, and we bought everybody cocktails at the end of the night. Why? Because I wanted people in person. But our marketing sets that up. It sets up the sales cycle, the sales process. So tomorrow we're going to get talking a little bit about some of your marketing call to actions. Okay. All right. We're a little over time, but that's good. I'm going to 